Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chris. I'm joined with Roth. We'd first off like to thank Sony for making this great new set available. Pretty. Um, brand new set for our conversations. Today, we're going to talk about adaptations, specifically comic adaptations, and the ones that we'd rather see as TV shows rather than movies. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think the first and most obvious one that pops into my head is Why the Last Man? Why the Last Why Man? Why the Last Man? Why the Last Man? This has some. Th this property has been in and out of development, heck, um, <laughs> as a movie forever. And every single time, I'm kind of s happy to see it not happen because I, what I really want is it to be developed as a television series. I think that the story, the structure of the story, really lends itself um, to a TV show. You need time with these characters. You need yeah. time to tell this story. You do. You condense it down to two hours, and you miss so much of what's good and interesting about this world and exploring this world. You know, whether you love The Walking Dead or not, I would say that it absolutely lends itself yeah. to being a TV series. It would not have worked as a movie. It's really long. Quite you know, well. it, it goes through multiple storylines. It's perfect mm -hmm. for TV in that way. I think if you tried to call Walking Dead down into movies you'd miss these things that make Walking Dead what it is. Yeah. It's almost got a, a languid flow to it because you are spending so much time just listening to characters, you know, yeah. deal with their situation and, and other human beings in that. So I think Walking Dead's a good example of a way that it worked. What do you think about like something like Fables? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because Fables, we almost see on TV yeah. in some ways. I'm uh, actually surprised as a result that yeah. we haven't seen fables, you know, like, uh, hey, this one thing has like actually worked, yeah. and now fables could work in that exact same way. Yeah. I think we could see it somewhere down the line after Once Upon a Time like loses its its steam, its gusto. Yeah, it's funny because I, I, you know, I've talked about fables a lot with people, and I actually think it, it definitely lends itself to a really fun TV series. Um, there's certainly been things that have been like it once upon a time. It's very much like it, yeah. but in this in this market, yeah, I'm surprised too. Like a cable network hasn't snapped it up, but I personally, and I I, I bet there are a lot of people out there that feel the same way. Um, I'd love to see Saga yeah. represented in um, as a series because I feel like trying to do Saga as a movie number one. Who I don't even know what the market is that for that as a movie, but as a TV show. Like it's it's got a, a lot of adult themes. We easily like live someplace like Netflix or Showtime or even Cinemax, who's getting a little bit more into you know scripted. Um, I would love to see that because it's actually, you know, it's one of those things where like you could spend a ton, a ton, a ton of budget on it, or you could kind of do it low key and just put a lot of style into it, yeah. make it like it's this grand space thing. But like if you had the right style and the right person doing it, I think it could be amazing. The story is so good, and the same thing with all these things that we're talking about. There's multiple storylines that weave in, um, and you know it has longevity. It's not one of those stories that you tell in two hours and you're done with it. Yeah, it's funny that you <laughs> you mentioned something like Netflix because I think that's the other thing is like there's so many opportunities now for yeah. something to be a series like it can be a series in so many different places in so many different ways another one that's kind of an X factor for me I'm not really sure I think I'd rather see Sandman as a TV show um, but I'm not sure because we don't know really enough about the actual movie production yeah. and what angle they're taking there but like Sandman lends itself to a longer take, right? I think it does. I mean, it's not quite not quite in the very obvious way that I think that Y does because that has a really clear narrative, right? right. Sandman's kind of non-linear in its in, in its narrative structure. So, you could pull out just a storyline from it and make it work as a really interesting movie. I also don't know who the audience is for that yeah. movie though either. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I really don't, which is why I feel like a limited Netflix series or something like that and you you see how it goes could be really cool for Sandman. The one thing that we're talking about, the thing that struck me as we're talking about this is like, we're talking about things that are like already bookended, you yeah. know, like why is done, the it's story done. is told. So like it would be interesting because you could almost make it like, this is a series, it's gonna go two seasons and then it will be told. Yeah. It's kind of like the strain, you know, that um, Del Toro is yeah. making. They've already said, hey, this is gonna be this many seasons, we're done after that because that's the story that was laid out. We're not going to milk it. Yeah, and I think that certainly audiences, I know myself, is I'm more and more attracted to things that have an end in sight. I mean, it's actually spinning, coming back to The Walking Dead. It is the difference in The Walking Dead, though, right? Because that doesn't have a definitive end that we know is coming. Yeah. Um, it just could keep going and going. I don't think it will. Um, 
But there's something attractive about the idea that we know that this thing is going yeah, to end done, at a certain point. And you don't, you know. The, yeah, the, the other thing I think, like, makes things a good candidate for TV outside of, like, it's a, you know, it's a really good narrative with multiple layers is I think the adult thing actually makes it, yeah. you know, makes TV more viable because you're not going to necessarily put something in the theater that's like an R-rated movie. I mean, Watchmen struggled to yeah. like get that big audience and kick ass. you know, kick ass. It's it's you know, when you make something comic book related and it's rated R, rated R in general actually is hard to to get butts and seats. It is. Um, but everything on cable is essentially rated R, like Game of Thrones, everything, you know, aspires to that model. So it's a good place for these things. And I think I personally don't want anything taken out of the comics. Like if there's adult material in a comic, like just adapt it the right way so yeah. that, you know, it's the same thing. And I think too for something like Sandman that that has a narrower kind of audience. I yeah. mean, I love it. I really do. But it does have kind of a narrower narrower appeal could work really well for something like on on HBO also because HBO is able to sink money yeah. into shows that that aren't Game of Thrones that aren't as big a hit because they have Game of Thrones you know they're able to invest in series that they think are really interesting but maybe don't have as huge of an audience base although I could be wrong this could draw in a huge audience you know? yeah well and and you know that's not necessarily I think it's a different thing to make an audience go to an opening weekend of a movie yeah. and an audience to say, okay, I'm going to discover this along the path because TV has such a huge ability for word of mouth, right. but a, mo a movie is like really, really trying to capitalize on that opening weekend window. And if you miss that, then, you know, then we have like home video coming in, but you, you're really relying on like that select group of people that want to see that telling their friends, otherwise you have to do another marketing push, which isn't always successful. No, it's not always successful, it's not always viable financially. I mean, I think that you're right, like TV just, especially now, as Breaking Bad has yeah. so completely proven, has the chance to build over time. As Walking Dead has proven, I mean, yeah. Walking Dead is now beating football on Sunday nights, that's like insane. And so you take that model and, and the AMCs of the world and the FXs of the world, and then on up to HBO and places like that in terms of like what they can show. like. It's a real home for things like this now. Yeah, I think that, I mean, we're talking about why it works as a business sort of model, but I think it also a lot of times lends itself just to the narrative yep. structure of the material. Um, another one that our producer mentioned that has been highly recommended to me, I've certainly not read yet, is Transmetropolitan. Yeah. Um, I'd like to read that, so that's another one. One thing that's not a comic, but that you and I both share an affection for I know what you're is gonna say. his dark materials. Yeah, the um, Golden Compass. Yes. Um, they made it into a movie, um, but it's a, a three book series. Yeah. It would actually make for a really interesting TV limited show, series. limited series, um, or maybe even three seasons, because I think you could actually expand that story out to like yeah. the places it's meant to go. Um, it would be interesting. It would be a. It would be a very, very intriguing. And now, you know, there's a precedent for it because uh, Lemony Snicket mm -hmm. is is coming back like they tried it. It was actually moderately successful, but then they dropped it with the Jim Carrey version. Right. Now they're bringing it um, to, I believe, Netflix. Um, I, yeah. And, you I know, believe, we're going to get like a whole new Lemony Snicket's world. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's Netflix. I'm or... not sure either. You guys let us know if you were, we should remember this, but we don't. But let us know in comments. But um, anyway, now it's coming and it's getting new life, so yeah. why not his dark materials? Why not his dark materials? I think that that is such a rich, interesting world. I think that you know audiences are so much more open to fantasy now. That's all I'll say about it, because we're sticking to comics, but <laughs> his dark materials. We'll have <laughs> book chats later, so tell us what you think in the comments, and as always, keep watching IGN.